Welcome students. Today we are going to start the new chapter. Uh, it's a chapter on semiconductors. This is a chapter from unit 2. Um, it is the fourth chapter in this uh, entire syllabus. So in this chapter, in the beginning we are going to study about what is called as a band theory of solids. Okay? More or less, uh, this some, more some things of this thing you already know of this uh, band theory. Just a revision sort of. And then further on we are going to study about transport phenomena, okay, the different types of currents which exist in a semiconductor. So to begin with, uh, the bank theory of solids. So we know that in a single atom, you will take an isolated atom, not in a solid but a separate individual atom. What are the atoms this of? It consists of a nucleus and electron going round in circular orbits. And these electrons which are there in the atom, they have certain discrete energy levels. Okay? So, uh, the energy levels are discrete like this. The lowermost energy level is E1, E2, E3 and so on. And as we go higher, the energy levels come more and more crowded together. So, this is the picture which we see in an individual atom, a single atom which is isolated from all other atoms. Not No other atoms are close to it. Okay? So, the energy levels are discrete. So, the electrons can either exist in uh, this level. Uh, either in this level or this level or this level or this level. In between two levels, the gap which is there, the electrons cannot exist. So there are discrete fixed energy levels in an isolated atoms. But now, what happens when you start bringing atoms closer to each other, more and more densely closer to each other? For example, in a solid, the spacing of the atoms is the least compared to all the three phases of matter, solids, liquid and gases. In a solid, the atoms are very close to each other. So what happens is that the energy levels of one atom and the energy levels are there tend to intermingle with each other and what happens is therefore instead of a band structure so in the solids the atoms are very close and instead of instead of forming discrete energy levels what are formed are energy bands like this okay uh, in this way so uh, what happens is energy levels come tend to come very close to each other like this all the energy levels tend to come very very close to each other and this they form one band of energy levels so no no now the energy levels are discrete they are very very so close to each other that you can cannot make out the difference between one energy level and the next energy level so they are just like one single band of levels so these are called as energy bands okay so like this so this is one energy band this is another energy energy band this is another energy band like this energy bands are formed whenever atoms become densely packed like for example in a solid now what happens, these bands are given certain names. The, well, so out of all the bands which are there, the energy band which is fully filled, highest energy band which is fully filled with electrons is called as the valence band. Okay? And the energy band above it which is empty, the conduction band, the energy band which is just above the valence band is called as the conduction band. So what is the valence band? Of all the energy bands which are formed, the highest filled energy, completely filled energy band is called as the valence band and the band above the valence band is called the conduction band. The conduction band may or may not be filled. It can sometimes be completely empty, it can sometimes be partially filled also. Okay? So that's the conduction band. Uh, in between the valence band and the conduction band there is a gap and this gap between the two bands is called as the energy gap denoted by the symbol Eg. Okay, so uh, this picture is what is seen in a solid. It is not there in a liquid or a gas. This type of energy bands are only formed in a solid wherein the atoms are very close to each other and the individual energy levels in the middle they forming energy bands like this. Now, based on this band structure, solids are classified into three categories. That is conductors, insulators and semiconductors. So, what are conductors? Conductors, you know, they easily pass electric current through them. So, what is the band structure of a conductor? So, in a conductor, the valence band and the conduction band, they overlap each other. So, it's like this. So, suppose you have the valence band. Where well, is the conduction band? The conduction band overlaps with the valence band. And there is an overlapping layer between the valence band and the conduction band. Okay? So, what we understand therefore from this is that, how much is the energy gap? There is no energy gap there because the two levels are overlapping. 
So there is no separation between the levels to two bends. So there is no energy gap. Energy gap is zero for a conductor. Uh, so even at zero Kelvin, even at zero Kelvin, there is the least possible temperature. The conduction band always has electrons in it because there is overlap. So whatever electrons are there in the valence band, the overlapping part is also there in the conduction band. So even at zero Kelvin, the conduction band always has electrons in it. So therefore, a conductor, if you connect it to a power supply, if you connect it to a potential, it allows current to flow through it even at zero Kelvin. So a conductor allows a large current to flow, large current to flow even at zero Kelvin when the potential difference is applied across it. The current in a conductor is normally in the range of amperes. 5 amperes, 10 amperes. So large current flows when you uh, connect it to a battery or a potential. What are the examples of conductors? All metals, aluminium, gold, silver, copper, all metals are conductors. And plus graphite and there are other non-metallic conductors also uh, which conduct a high large amount of current when you connect them to a potential. So this is about a conductor. The next uh, type of uh, solid is an uh, insulator. What is what, what is the band structure of an insulator? So in an insulator, the valence band and the conduction band are widely separated by a large energy gap. So the energy gap between them is greater than 3 electron volts. Okay? So for a material which has an energy gap greater than 3 electron volts, we call it as an insulator. So you can see over here, conduction band and valence band, there is a large gap between them. So the conduction band is completely empty. Because of the large energy gap, valence band may be full because since there is a large gap between them, electrons from here cannot very easily jump into the conduction band and occupy the place over there. So under normal circumstances, uh, in a conductor, uh, sorry, insulator, the conduction band is completely empty. Now, so therefore, if the conduction band is empty, the insulator does not conduct current. Why? Because if you, if any material to conduct current, there has to be electrons in the conduction band. That's why that name, conduction band. Only when there are electrons in the conduction band, the material will be able to conduct. So in the insulator, there are no electrons in the conduction band, so there is no one to conduct the electric current. So the insulator, even if, even if you apply a large voltage across it, it will not conduct electricity. But if you keep on increasing the voltage, might be let's say 1000 volts, 2000, 10,000, as you keep on increasing, there is something called as breakdown. Okay. Even an insulator at that high voltage can conduct electricity. So it's not the case that insulators can never conduct current. Then when they break down by applying a very large amount of energy, in, the, in this case by applying a high voltage, very, very large voltage, you can make an insulator also to conduct. But under normal low voltages, normal voltage conditions, the insulator will not conduct electricity. What are examples of inverters? Plastic, wood, rubber, paper, these are all examples of bed conductors. Okay? So where is this used? They are used for insulators. Like for example, you have a copper wire which is conducting electricity. The outer casing of it is mostly made of uh, plastic, so so as to prevent the electric current from uh, flowing out of it. Okay, so the uh, copper wire conductor is coated in insulating material. So this is where insulator normally used. The last type of material which we which are this chapter is based on the entire remaining chapter is the third type of uh, solids which is called a semiconductor. Okay, so semiconductor name. It itself suggests that it has a conductivity in between that of a uh, good conductor and a insulator. So the conductivity of semiconductors lie in between the two other materials which we have seen earlier. Uh, so what is the band structure of it? It also has a valence band and a conduction band. There is a separation between them. They are not overlapping. But the gap between them is small. There is a small energy gap which is less than 2 electron volts. Okay? So there is a very small energy gap there. So what happens therefore, at 0 Kelvin, which is a zero energy state, there is no temperature, there is no heat there. So at 0 Kelvin, the conduction, the valence band is completely full and the conduction band is completely empty. And at 0 Kelvin, since the electron don't have energy, they cannot jump, even this small energy gap, they cannot overcome and go into the conduction band. So at 0 Kelvin, where the energy level is zero, the semiconductor behaves like an insulator. It will not conduct electricity even if you connect the voltage across it. So at zero Kelvin, a semiconductor behaves like an insulator because its conduction band is completely empty. But as the temperature rises, as you raise the temperature above zero Kelvin, what happens? You are raising the energy level. So electrons on the valence band start being excited. They start gaining little by little more and more energy. And when this small energy gap is overcome, electrons on the valence band jump into the conduction band and they are available for conduction. So any temperature above zero Kelvin, 
the material conducts a small amount of current. So a semiconductor becomes uh, uh, conducting only at temperatures above 0 Kelvin. So at room temperature, let us say 300 Kelvin, 27 degrees Celsius, a semiconductor can very well conduct, okay, because at 300 Kelvin, it's a quite high uh, energy temperature. So there are, the, the energy which is there for the electron sufficient enough to overcome this small energy gap and go into the conduction band and take part in the conduction. So at room temperature, all semiconductors do conduct current, but the current is small, it's normal in the range of milliamperes. Conductors, I told you, the current range is in terms of amperes, whereas for semiconductors, the current range is in terms of uh, milliamperes. And examples of uh, semiconductors are silicon, germanium, selenium, gallium, arsenide. Okay, these are some common examples. And the most commonly used uh, semiconductor material for making most of our semiconductor devices is silicon. Okay, germanium is also used, but uh, less commonly. So uh, all the integrated circuits, diodes, uh, transistors, most of the, mostly they are made of silicon. Okay, so these are the three types of materials: conductors, insulators, and semiconductors. And based on the energy band structure, uh, we classify them into these three categories. So in the further part of this chapter, we'll be, uh, we are going to study about semiconductors in more details. What is the what is the current which flows in the semiconductor, and a very important phenomenon called Hall effect. Okay, so that will be coming in the uh, next classes. Thank you.